Jamaica Root CV. Thank you for joining me on this video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And please remember to hit that notification bell so you're notified when we've uploaded a video. So, there's been an about 360 on the Worthy Park estate situation. So, I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Minister of Information, Member of Parliament, Robert Morgan, um, has given a statement to TVJ. I was watching All Angles with Dean Jackson Miller. Um, credit goes out to this particular interview. Well, all credit goes out to them. And he is saying that they had to send out eviction notices to the residents of Worthy Park so that they will stand up and take note because they have been sending them um, many notices and they not been um, getting any response from the residents in Worthy Park. So they had to send out eviction notices. So you let me know how you feel about that statement. Um, is it true? Do you think that that's a true statement? Or if it's not true, let me know by commenting below. I am not sure why they would send out eviction notices when there were other options. When you a history of a Worthy Park. Um, Worthy Park was granted as a gift. So approximately 840 acres were gifted to Francis Price. They came in and they invaded Jamaica and captured um, Jamaica from the Spaniards. He was an officer in the army. In a video shortly on that, Cromwell was best known for being Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland, Ireland, after he defeated King Charles I in the Civil War. He was one of Cromwell was a political and military leader in the 17th century. Failed to conquer Haiti, then they moved to Jamaica. So they wanted to please Oliver Cromwell. They did not want to go back empty handed. So they turned their ships to Jamaica because they thought, you know, that would please him and be like easy takings, right? So, and it, it was not as fortified as Haiti. So they believed that they would um, just capture Jamaica and all of that. So yes, they came in and of course they captured Jamaica. It wasn't as easy as they thought it would because the pockets of resistance in certain areas up to five years after the invasion, right? So in the hills. So that is on a next video that I did. I'm going to pin a, a, a link in the description about that video as well. So I'm just trying to show you that these lands were given as gifts all over the place, the British, for their quote-unquote, military service in helping to conquer Jamaica. So they started to divvy up the land, hundreds of acres, to uh, many officers who helped them in the war, and then they became planters. So that's how it went. And when they ran, left the land, it was never divvied up to the ex-slaves, right? Or, um, or the ex-enslaved people never got um, a portion of it. And because of that, there's a lot of... Um, issues stemming from all of that because people are just wandering around um get building homes here and there and all of that wherever they could find a piece of land right so nothing was really on paper majority of it was not on paper however pastors purchased the land on their behalf and then they would divide up the land amongst themselves right um so that's how you got the communities established as well sometimes a pastor or a bishop would um, purchase the land and divide it up and give it to them. But there are times when they had to give the money to these people because of the fact that other Europeans would not um, sell them the land, of course, because of their skin color. So they had to give it to a quote unquote white person to buy it for them. And that person, the land was in that person's name. So they just continued from generation to generation, just living um, on the property, but it's not actually in their names, right? And that's how it went. So I would definitely um, support the rent to own land as well as the rent to own home, because as you can see, Jamaicans are able to start with one room and end up with like six, seven rooms or more. So it's not a matter of, uh, okay, they're not able to build their homes, it's the, the land. So you, if they purchase the land, because if you sell them the land at an affordable rate, 
they're able to put homes on it so that could be explored as well month to month basis right rent to own that definitely needs looking into because there's a lot of land around and there is a lot of homeless people around so i guess worthy park residents um you are good according to the government representative the eviction was a notice so that you could you're able to act on what they've been requesting for the past number of years or months according to the um the member of parliament um let's get into that what you may they, they, this is a complete um 360 on the eviction notices now so they want you to come in and be regularized and they will help you through that so this is a good ending um to this situation here in worthy park i hope we don't hear of any more evictions um because the people of jamaica they need somewhere to live and there's a lot of land around so why not regularize everybody right and for those who are listening in and if you're on land and you know that your four parents own that land then it's time to go into the land agency and see if you're able to regularize that so i would definitely um, support the rent to own land as well as the rent to own home because as you can see jamaicans are able to start with one room and end up with like six seven rooms or more so it's not a matter of uh, okay they're not able to build their homes it's the, the land so you if they purchase the land because if you sell them the land at an affordable rate they're able to put homes on it so that could be explored as well um, on a month-to-month -month basis right rent to own that definitely needs looking into Why don't we start um addressing the issue and getting people um lands at a more affordable rate right so they're able to build their homes now i'm going to let you listen to an excerpt of the interview that was done on tvj and all credit goes to, credit goes to tvj for this audio if you are occupying government land and you have received notices that you must regularize or you must come in. And if you do not do it, then based on the process that exists, we put a notice. There's one notice based on what is in the regulations. Now, in conversations with the National Land Agency, I, one of the issues that I had to inquire on is the issue of Lloydersville because I was very concerned about it. And my information from the technocrats there is, listen, we have been making so many attempts to try and get the persons to come in to regularize them that the only the only, when we recognized that the land was being sold by some persons in the community and new squatting was taking place, the only, the only option we had was to give notices in the community, get the people to come in and we can regularize them. So it's not a case where the notice was there to basically hold a gun over their head, but it's a case where to say, listen, we've been trying to get you guys to regularize, we've been trying to get you to start the process. We've not been having a lot of success. The situation is getting worse where new persons are coming in and people are selling land to new persons. And that has to stop because the selling of those lands will negatively impact the viability of the regularization of the persons who have been there for a long time. I mean, it's a number of factors that have contributed to, um, to failure. But I tell you, the, the problem is really deep-seated and goes back to the issue that Senator Fraser been raised, and I think it was um, Bobby Stevens earlier, about how slavery and the subsequent issues of land ownership were treated, and the black masses who were thrown off the plantation without any compensation, those individuals end up capturing land. They never had any capital to um, purchase um, land or to invest in housing. And so their descendants continue to suffer. And it is incumbent upon the state to assist these individuals and not demolish these individuals. If they had divvied up the land, even given the enslaved people or the ex-enslaved people one acre or half an acre, we would not be in this problem today. But it was never resolved. They left in a hurry. They packed up and and left jamaica in a hurry majority of them did 
or some of them hang on after 1838 and then slowly left because they realized that the sugar boom was over, right? A few of them still um, remained, like um, where the park is still running, right? Up and running and a few estates, uh, you can count them maybe on one hand, but majority of them left and went back to their home country. So if they had done the respectable thing by divvying up the land um, to the people who they were um, working literally to that, then this would not be a problem. But you have so much land and people are don't have anywhere to live. See that Jamaicans have ambition. They have a lot of ambition because the nice homes that they're able to build out of nothing on these lands is something to see, right? Thank you for joining me on this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please remember to hit that notification bell so you're notified when we've uploaded a video. Thanks for the support and please subscribe if you like the content. See you on the next video. Bye for now.